Hello everybody and welcome back once again to K-Tapes. This week I have a couple of tapes I want to show you. I know I always say that, but it's true, I have a couple of tapes, but really just a handful this time, uh, simply because I've been a bit busy. I went back to work recently and also uh, the few trips I had to Seoul, because uh, this is my main source of like finding tapes these days. I don't go like to other cities or anything, uh, simply because, you know, transportation everything is quite expensive and um, the, the stores like uh, in the countryside you don't have much stuff to be honest and if I go there it needs to be for something that's worth you know going there otherwise paying the train tickets $40 $50 just to get like a handful of you know useless tapes is is no good so anyway uh, what I found uh, recently and I'm gonna show you got about like eight tapes it's not that many but in there there's like some really cool gems so let's dig into this starting with the least interesting of the bunch uh, which is um, as good as it gets uh, movie from I, was that like the late 90s was that like 97 I can't remember uh, I've never seen this film to be honest I know like it was I think Jack Nicholson won uh, an Academy Award for this uh, this role so I'm pretty sure it's a great film. Anyway, the reason I'm showing you this one, uh, honestly, because I got it for like really cheap. Uh, that's the only reason I picked this up because this is really not the usual kind of tape I would show you. You know, I always go for like horror films, rare films, and this is kind of like meh. Anyway, the only reason is because as you can see, it is sealed. So it was kind of part of a deal. And I was like, well, should I toss it away or just keep it? Well, here's anyway, it's a little bit broken, but anyway, still it's a sealed tape. Uh, and what's kind of unusual about this it's because it comes in a cardboard uh, sleeve like you, like you would find in North America for example and this is really usually not the case in South Korea so I don't know what what's what happened with this maybe it was like a sell through that's that's what I think um, so that you could buy in a store uh, yeah exactly so uh, not a rental, I guess a rental of this would have come in a plastic clamshell, but that's not the case. This was, this was perhaps a sell-through. Uh, so yes, anyway, it is uh, sealed. I don't know what this is here, like the Nega, probably like just the, um, the release. It says, let me zoom in and focus on this. It says nega.co.kr. Uh, yeah, I guess is the label. And it's so weird to have like this huge add on the back for this uh, like air shampoo conditioner whatever anyway it's, it's it's kind of like an odd release and it was sealed so anyway I, that's the only reason I kept it and I actually I'm selling it because that's not the kind of stuff I want to keep around and I kind of sell it for like really cheap so if it interests anyone well you're welcome to shoot me a message or something I'm gonna sell it I think I'm I think I was gonna ask like maybe $30 that's it 25 30 max uh, but it's sealed, so it's uh, hey hey. All right, next let's go with uh, some late releases, uh, to say the least. So we have here the Hitcher, uh, which is a remake from a uh, oh my god, I think it was like a 1985, 86. I could it could even be like 87 film. I'm so bad with years. Uh, I've seen obviously I've seen the original one I, I think I've watched this one but I don't remember anything if it followed the same plot as the original one but the first one I mean the original film with Rudger Hour was extremely great uh, remember seeing that when I was younger and I was like blown away like how creepy his character was and scary uh, although like it, it goes like I mean the beginning was great but after it like half the film it, it goes like overboard but anyway still was a great film so this is the remake which is from 2007 so this is a post uh, of course demise of VHS tapes in North America which as you know is some somewhere around 2006 so this is 2007 it goes beyond so it's a movie that probably never came out in North America on videotape on VHS so here you have an original VHS release 
for the film The Hitcher, which is the uh, remake of the film, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with a blind shoot here. I mean, I'm 2000, uh, 1987, I think, 86, anyway. So there you have it. It was released by LG, which is kind of uh, unusual. I mean, they have a couple releases, but usually we see other companies, not LG. So this is an LG, and by the way, it's in great shape. There's like a little something here, but it, it doesn't affect the, um, the sleeve underneath. It's just uh, the plastic, so otherwise in top shape. All right, let's move on to the next one. This is something I have back in stock. I actually have another copy in stock of this. Uh, it's just this copy is top shape. I mean, by that, I mean... There's absolutely no sun fade. So if you're a George A. Romero uh, fan or collector, this is absolutely a tape you need to have in your collection because that was the, uh, I mean, I've been asked a couple of times like, oh, uh, is there like the, the other films, the, the other zombie films he released after that, were they available in South Korea on VHS? Personally, I've never seen them. So I believe they don't exist. Even on DVD, I don't think I've seen them. So, uh, yeah, probably they were like two small productions. They, they didn't have the distribution in South Korea, but that was perhaps, I believe, the last George Romero film that has been put on tape or even DVD, and that came out in South Korea on video format. And uh, anyway, the tape is just gorgeous. They have like a really cool selection of images on the back. Um, anyway, so cool montage and some uh, gory effects here. It's really cool. So there you have it, Land of the Dead. Like I said, I have another copy, but I think it, it has a, a bit of sun fade on the spine. This one is just gorgeous. As you can see, tape is top shape. Here was maybe some sticker I couldn't remove. Yeah, anyway, and it's the original uh, Universal clamshell. So hey, that's always a plus. Okay. Uh, next, what can I show you? Oh, we have an older film here called The Platoon Warriors. And strangely, I think this movie is called Platoon The Warriors, something like that. I mean, the the is, is mixed up somewhere else and it, it does make like a different title. Anyway, Platoon The Warriors or Warriors Platoon The, anyway, <laughs> something, something along those lines. I'm gonna write down maybe the, the title at the bottom. Anyway. Uh, this uh, is quite rare and it's one of those um, IFD productions. I, I don't know if it's Godfrey Ho uh, who directed this film or not, but he was probably involved in some ways. Um, so yeah, here the plastic's a bit beat up, but again, the sleeve underneath is top shape. Uh, also, barely any sun fade on the spine. It's a really gorgeous release, really cool. I love those like cutouts, like montage like this it's uh, it's really old school they could have cut out like inside the, the gun here anyway uh, that's just me being like a bit technical here if it was photoshop it would have been easy to remove but yeah back in the days they would probably cut with like scissors and stuff so really cool artwork uh, beautiful release uh, and also in top shape yeah Usually, yeah, well, of course, as you know, I clean those tapes, but I make sure they also play because if it's like affecting the playback, then for me, it's just I usually throw that in the garbage unless it's just the, you know, the beginning that I clean, but it, there's still some playback issues, but it doesn't affect the whole movie. I mean, if it goes beyond the um, the opening credits, for, for example, then for me, it would be considered kind of trash or if it, it needs to be like only five minutes of the beginning. Otherwise, it's beyond that is a no, no. Um, unless it's like an extremely rare film but yeah anyway so this one is great it's in top shape uh, what do I have next uh, I have a little oddity here um, I've seen that for sale once uh, it was a bit expensive uh, so I didn't take it and I think the condition was a bit dodgy so I didn't take a chance on it this time around I found this uh, it was in top shape, uh, great. I mean, the tape, I think I didn't even need to clean the tape. It was like beautiful. So this film is called Midnight Blue. Uh, and it's a, um, I think it's an Italian Spanish co-production or something like that. Uh, probably just Italian film. Anyway, it's kind of one of those giallos, but not really a giallo. It's kind of like ripping off Last House 
on the left, I think, and stuff like that. I mean, th the same vibe. Um, and I think it was released in the late 70s, if not maybe like very early 80s, like 81 or 19, even 1980, uh, I can remember exactly. So this one anyway is called Midnight Blue. It's a rare film, uh, well, somehow rare. In Korean tape, it's quite rare. I mean, this is some, uh, some kind of like really small label that released that. And the copy is really good. I mean, yeah, the red is not like perfectly red on the spine, but other than that, I mean, it's in really great shape. And it's from the Aju uh, label. I mean, yeah, sorry, it's on the Aju label. Although this uh, maybe like a co-release. They have the Aju label right here. Even have a phone number if you want to call. <laughs> And um, what year is that, just for fun? Oh, it says 1984. So that's a 1984 release. That's quite old. Um, yeah, I mean, anything below 1988 is always considered like, like I would say the golden age of VHS in Korea because uh, after 1988, you know, South Korea was exposed to the world because of the Olympics uh, so they ramped up the production South Korea was a uh, like industrialized like a big country like not big country but they were you know getting up there uh, but before 1988 it was like a totally different country so those like late releases those golden age releases tapes are quite hard to find now and they're really rare yeah okay uh, next I have something else that came back in stock Luckily, and it's uh, Ilsa, She-Wolf of the SS, uh, with the other name of Nazi Ilsa, uh, which I found like very cool because I think it's the only release in the world that does say Nazi Ilsa. Otherwise, it's really just She-Wolf of the SS or Ilsa, She-Wolf of the SS. Uh, what else? I mean, I, I showed you this tape before, so there's nothing else to tell you about it other than it's in really great shape. I mean, unfaded spine, which is like, I think I've only found one or maybe, yeah, maybe two other copies. I mean, I mean, the, out there there's maybe two, three copies, including this one and that's about it. Uh, so to have this one back in stock is, is like quite incredible. And it's, it's original clamshell. I mean, probably you can see, well, it's hard with the reflection, but uh, this is the original clamshell with the same uh, label uh, so that's a huge plus it's in great shape as well the only thing would be like at the bottom I mean if you want to be really picky uh, because the uh, the sleeve was kind of uh, the inlay was kind of um, was kind of a little bit outside of plastic like sticking out so it was like kind of uh, used a little bit like right here otherwise the front looks quite good the back yeah it is what it is oh and someone asked me about this uh, oh it's cut on the corner actually the other copies I had also were cut like this on the corner don't ask me I don't know why probably the uh, the company uh, made that on purpose because when you're inserting the sleeve inside the the plastic box the clamshell the fact that there's no corner you know it, it won't like get caught on the corner like when you slide it in I, but it's just my assumption I don't know but anyway um, yeah I guess the best way to know would be to ask the company if it would still exist or the people that were in charge why you would cut the corners but because no other uh, companies would actually do that from memory uh, but only this one so anyway so it's not a defect it, it wasn't cut by someone or, or, or on purpose it's exactly the same cut the same angle the two or three copies I had including this one so it's not a defect so there you have it this one will be up for sale it's quite expensive because it's in great great shape okay next uh, we have another one I think I had in the past um, but it sold quite quickly and it's silent night deadly night part I believe this is part one I have to double check uh, yeah that's something I have to do I'll put this tape on the side because um, there was a series like that maybe it was slumber slumber party massacre that looks like a part one but sadly I didn't double check the tape and it was a part two I mean the tape looked like one part one but it's part two they always do that with South Korean tapes you don't know like out of a series which movie it is because they use 
you know, images from the other films in the same series. So this one, I would believe it's part one, but I could actually be wrong. And maybe this is a part two uh, or maybe even a part three. So I'll need to check. Um, but yeah, to my knowledge, I think it's part one. Uh, so there you have it. Some images again. I don't I, I've never seen this film, so I know I'm you know, I'm aware of this film. I know it's a slasher in, from the 80s, da, 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 but uh, I've never seen him. I've always seen the cover <laughs> in the video stores, but I've never rented it. Uh, so I can tell if these images are actually from part one or not. And the same thing goes for the uh, pictures on the cover, on the front cover. So there you have it. Uh, it's the tape in top shape as well and comes in its original clamshell from Deu. There you have it, Deu. And by the way, this is not like a medium, weird, medium-sized Daewoo clamshell. It's just the original, uh, like, you know, basic one, same size as all the other ones. Because Daewoo used to make a weird oddball, like, size of clamshell for, like, some tapes back in the mid-80s. Uh, but they didn't release that many titles with that specific size of clamshell. And someone's been asking me about this, if I can get one like easily but strangely no i cannot get that easily because no even like shitty movies would pop up with that clamshell size and anything like small cases in south korea usually the sellers try to sell them like more expensive because they were kind of part of the earlier vhs releases so for them to their eyes like they don't know which title is sometimes like really i mean for me for example they wouldn't know like oh this would sell for good money or not they would just say oh it's a small case it's more expensive uh, speaking of small case i have a film here that is extremely rare uh, which is kidnap in rome and by the way as you can see uh, well the clamshell is the same size right but the the sleeve inside the inlay is smaller so this actually should go in a small case uh, but it came in actually it came in this exact uh, clamshell here that you see I didn't you know come up with this clamshell it was in this one with a little paper on, uh, behind uh, anyway with like a little pattern so just to uh, I don't know they used to do that I should have kept it to show you I'm sorry but yeah usually they have like a paper behind but I removed that I kind of hate it and I rather try to find maybe like a smaller clamshell to just fit this perfectly but for the time being it's gonna stay in this um, so yeah anyway speaking of small clamshell yeah and this cost me <laughs> by the way more because it's it's a, a small uh, really small box like they say in South Korea and also um, I'm just gonna bring your attention here this is a o Oasis release Oasis is actually like the Vestron of South Korea um, I'm saying that because many Vestron uh, titles were released under Oasis in South Korea um, so yeah that said uh, I don't know many South Koreans kind of collect this label for some reason. I, th well, I don't know if they do that much, but I know it's quite popular. Whenever I see Oasis, it's kind of always a bit more expensive. I don't know why. So anyway, this one uh, cost me a bit more. I'm not going to tell you how much, but it cost me more than my usual tapes. But I knew it was rare, so I picked it up. I love the, the tagline here. It's just too funny. Kung Fu comes to the land of spaghetti. Uh, okay, I don't know if you could say that today, but yeah. I mean, those were the days, right? You could just get away with any taglines, whatever. No one cared. Uh, anyway, that's quite funny. Uh, so you have it. Kidnap in Rome. It's a uh, Hong Kong film. Hong Kong? Is it Hong Kong? Yeah. And um, yeah, shot in Italy. So it's a co-production. And what's so special about this one? Because I kept saying like, oh, this one costs more, da, da, da. But what else is special about this tape is the fact that apparently, I mean, I... I asked some people, some really reliable sources out there of, because uh, you know I'm not a fan of Kung Fu films usually, uh, but I asked like Kung Fu uh, aficionados and they told me that apparently this film, uh, well by the way, is the English dub version. And uh, if you look everywhere, actually it's not really hard, but if you check on eBay, uh, not on eBay, I mean on uh, YouTube, <laughs> you can easily find this film, but it's going to be the original uh, Cantonese or perhaps Mandarin version subtitled in English but the English dub is extremely rare again according to my sources I 
I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not a Kung Fu fan or a Kung Fu buff, but apparently this copy is extremely rare for that matter. I don't know if other releases in the world also have an English uh, dub. I've heard maybe something about like a Lebanon uh, release or, or South African release. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, the South Korean one, English dub. Uh, which makes it quite unique. I'm gonna sell this one um, like I'm selling all the other tapes. Uh, I don't know the value well, although I, like I said, it's, it's rare, it costs me more, so it's probably not gonna be that cheap. Um, and also, one more thing, if you check the year at the bottom, uh, where is it? Oh, it's in red, it's a bit hard to read, but it says like, like right here, uh, maybe I can zoom in. All right, so it says 1980. It's 85. So it's 1985 uh, Which makes it like a again uh, one of the uh, I wouldn't say like one of the first releases, but a very old uh, early release uh, of South Korean tape. So there you have it guys um, These are the few tapes. I wanted to show you. I mean, I thought there were like enough tapes uh, to make a video because as you know, I don't like to make a video if I only have like two tapes to show you. It's kind of useless. It'll be like two minutes long. Um, and also I don't like to make a video if I have, for example, like a hundred tapes, right? Or 50 tapes, it's way too many. So anything under 20 tapes is kind of fine. So here you have it, eight tapes, uh, if you count this. Anyway, so great stuff. I'm really happy about most of these. Uh, I hope to be able to find more tapes eventually because it's fall, it's way more comfortable to go shop in Seoul because it was brutally hot this summer here in Seoul. It's incredibly uncomfortable. But now it's the temperature is dipping down a little bit. So to go in the market, check around, it's way more comfortable. So anyway, I'll be back soon, guys. And thanks again. Uh, give the uh, video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Uh, give it a like, Give subscribe. That would be the best thing to do. And if you want, uh, leave a comment. That's always really appreciated. All right, guys. So see you next time and have a great week.